Right, hello everybody. Welcome to uh, another road reflection here. Uh, been a bit of a strange end of the tour. <laughs> uh, I'm, I'm sure you guys could uh, could tell uh, the, you know that by by just sort of the. The title of the video and also the, just the general demeanor of, of what's going on in the country, it's been a, it's been a very strange end of the tour. I, I, I think this whole video is going to be um, kind of surrounding COVID-19, um, so I don't know if I'm going to break it off into sections. I might do that. I might do, do, do some break-offs, uh, uh, you know, if, if, I, if I can kind of uh, figure out how to... Um, uh, how to do that, but I think for the most part, uh, this, this will be released everywhere, um, uh, usually what I do with the Road Reflections is the full one hour plus, one hour or hour plus video, I will, um, I'll just release on Facebook and as an audio version of it, but, uh, like the censorship video that I did, the Spotify censorship video, I kind of released uh, on YouTube as well as on uh, Facebook and the audio as well once I got my audio back and so I'll probably end up doing with this because I think everything is kind of intertwined with this COVID situation there's a, there's, there's a lot that I do want to address uh, in regards to that but let's start with this um, so early in the week you know, I was kind of dealing with that censorship stuff, and I knew that in the periphery all this COVID stuff was going on. Um, and, I'd, and I'd kept minor tabs on it uh, just because I was like, well, we'll see how well, how much it, uh, how much it really um, goes crazy. It, it might go very crazy. It might, it might go, um, it might just blow over altogether. I'm, I'm not entirely sure. Um, so Wednesday I was in Des Moines, uh, drove from St. Louis to Des Moines on Wednesday, did the Teehees Comedy Club, phenomenal club, amazing club, uh, Sid Jawarker and his, and his team are, are fucking killing it in Des Moines, uh, and, uh, you know, nothing against all the other venues that have performed at Des Moines, but, uh, this was the best goddamn show I've done in Des Moines, Iowa, uh, ever, <laughs> And like I said, it's not, but it's just, they're doing something different. You know, they, it, they, it, it really shows when um, a venue cares about the, uh, the content uh, and the art that's being put on their stage. You can really, really tell. The production of the show is different. The, the, the energy that, uh, from the audience is, is different. Um, you know, everything is, is, uh, the, there's just some magic in the air, you know, I, I, I don't know how else to put it, uh, you know, and, uh, it was a really, really fun show, uh, a lot of these kind of interesting little moments that happened throughout the show, um, that uh, at the very end of this video, I will discuss what what we're gonna do moving forward. Uh, but uh, yeah, really, really fun show. I had a really good time. Um, and you know, the, like I said, the 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 news about COVID was was in the air, right? The whole like, hey, if you're sick, um, take care of yourself. Just don't be around large groups, it's not good, disinfect things, wash your hands, wash your hands, for the love of fuck, wash your hands, why are you not washing your hands, there was a lot of that going around, and, you know, we, we even kind of uh, had a, a couple of little jokes about it, of, of, you know, Sid was wiping down the, the mics and stuff with uh, with Clorox, and that was a fun little th gag that we, that we did uh, for the rest of the week there, but... Uh, uh, I wake up on Thursday, uh, heading to the Quad Cities. That was the next tour stop. And literally from the end of that show, I hung out with some pretty cool people. Got to talk about, uh, about some politics and about organizing and um, things of that sort. Uh, it was a very, very interesting gentleman. Uh, and... 
I go back and you know I'm I go to bed and I wake up the next day and literally all hell had broken loose. And it's not, I mean it's not like I woke up like late or anything. I, it was like maybe nine o'clock. All hell had broken loose. Um, there was hysteria uh, all around. Everybody was freaking out. You know, and uh, and I was like, okay, uh, what's 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 up? Did did a bunch of people like overnight die? No, no. They just said that it was here and it could spread. Uh, and you know, like it's a communicable disease, and elderly people are at risk. But you know, the media was the media wasn't doing anybody any favors because why would they? The media thrives on fear. They 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 make their money off of scaring the shit out of regular people. So it's like, all right, well, we'll see how the rest of the weekend shakes out. Um, I'm on tour anyway. I'm coming to these cities regardless. You know, so I'm getting messages from comics. Uh, that were on the Chicago show about, hey, are we canceling? They're canceling all these shows in Chicago. Are we canceling? Um, and at that point, I was like, I've already paid the deposit. I have a bunch of people that bought tickets. Let's just do the show. I have a bunch of people that said that are coming. Let's just do the fucking show. Uh, same thing with Moline. And then I had a lot of emails and messages going back and forth about my album recording dates, uh, which we will also talk about in, at the end of the, end of the video here as well, uh, but, you know, everybody was like, do we cancel? What do we do? What's, what's, what, what's going to happen? And, and, and on Thursday morning, it was very difficult to tell how much of this was really media spin and fear-mongering versus... Um, actual scientific knowledge about, uh, you know, this this thing we don't know a lot about. And like I said, there's a lot to say, so bear with me. We're going to take it step by step. The rest of the weekend, the shows were fun. I had a really good time. Uh, but I definitely think that the COVID scare affected the, the number of people that would have probably come out to, uh, to see a show like mine, and, and especially with the amount of, um, you know, interest that we were, uh, we were generating on some of these shows, and I mean, we were doing well, I mean, Teehees, we had like 30 people there, it was incredible, it was great, um, and I had, a, I had a really fun time there, and really fun time in Moline, too, One Dollar Producer Project. We had a, I had a great time. Um, got to hang out with, uh, with with my friends Anthony and Marnie and Mike, and got you know got to see some new people and Holly, you know all these people that came out. Uh, I hadn't seen them in in a, in a little while, and um, so you know we were and we were talking about all this stuff, and I and I riffed about you know what was going on, um, and. Again, things kind of were, they were okay. You know, a lot of people kind of understood, like, this seems to be like spin. This seems to be everybody who's in, in panic mode over something they don't understand. Uh, that maybe we should uh, attempt to understand a little bit more of. And the rest of the weekend has just been damage control. So we moved to Friday, and I'm talking to a bunch of venues about what are we going to do? What are we going to do about our shows next week? And then I get a message from Lee Camp saying, hey, we're, we got to cancel these shows in Arizona. So fortunately, those shows are canceled. And I got to figure out what I'm going to do about these plane tickets and the rental car, um, you know, that's 600 bucks right there. Uh, and uh, 
So I gotta I gotta take care of that. And I'm going back and forth about this album recording in, in DC in Williamsport and the venue owner is telling me they're staying open, they're doing shows, they might cancel, they're doing this for precautions, they're um, you know, here's the message we're sending out to the people so that they know what's up. Okay. But you know, they were like, hey, if things get crazy, we reserve the right to shut it down at any moment. And I was like, yeah, all right. I hope that, you know, we can figure this out before Friday so that I don't have to make the drive and then, you know, I'm I'm halfway there and they go, hey, we got to cancel it. What? Like, I don't, that's the thing that I wouldn't want. So trying to stay ahead of it is probably the best thing to do so I was in gig limbo for a little bit it's Friday the Chicago show goes very well we had a nice tight little audience very small audience and uh, you know kind of an abridged show Uh, but uh, it went very well they're really really fun Uh, got to hang out with some cool people got to talk Star Trek for a while that was nice uh, you know, we, you know, it's not every day that you get to talk about uh, Next Generation and Captain Picard in the midst of uh, in the midst of you know an outbreak of some kind. Um, and uh, and then we got to Saturday, the final show of the tour, which was Indianapolis, um, and that show did not happen. And uh, at that point, like I literally walked into the venue and it was like totally empty excuse me Whew. Um, I just had I'm, this is like post lunch uh, too so yeah uh, but uh, I totally empty in Indianapolis uh, so I just hang I, I sat down and hung out with my friends for a bit the, my, the folks that I was kind of bashing with and you know 845 rolls around 850 rolls around I was like I don't think the show's gonna happen anymore you know I think this is uh, this is a this is a dunzo I, 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 I wrote out I wrote out the storm as long as I could you know is kind of the way that I look at it I wrote out this storm for as long as I fucking could and uh, and, and that luck ran out last night um, you know so I had some I had some thinking that I needed to do about what was going to happen with with the rest of this stuff so um, there's a lot of anxiety and concern but we had to cancel the DC show we're moving that to June and we're, we had to cancel the Williamsport show and we're moving that to June as well uh, Pittsburgh Fringe is also canceled but there might be some audio opportunities uh, so there might be a way that the the fringe ends up becoming like an online kind of thing that you purchase you can like maybe purchase a download of a certain thing of a certain project or you can stream it. Um, they're, they're trying to figure that out, but I have an idea of what I would do for that. Uh, so basically, here's where I'm at. Um, within the span of 72 hours, I've lost three weeks of work. Uh, I had built in Easter to be my one week off after all of this touring and recording. Um, so right now, I'm sitting at four weeks with... Uh, with no tour dates, with no work, with no with no touring work, right? And as somebody that makes their living off of touring and creating content, uh, it's pretty difficult right now. I uh, definitely had some minor panics about this situation. Um, so uh, I guess we'll talk about this at the to- at the top of the at the top of the video because of COVID um, and. You know the the sort of the height of, of everything being what it is. Um, there is no. Um, here's the concern. Sure, safety, absolutely. If people are not comfortable coming out to see the live show, uh, I would most indefinitely not force them to do so. Um, I would also not. 
you know, what, you're not going to have a good time. If you show up to the show and, you know, you're worried about, is it here? I, I hope, I hope not. Am I able to touch the table? Like, you know, that's, that's not a good atmosphere for the, for a show. Um, so safety, absolutely. Secondly, I mean, no, if, if people are quarantining themselves, they're not going to come to see the show. It's just not something that is going to happen so there's that uh to turn out wouldn't be great the recording probably wouldn't turn out to be to be great either so what's the plan what's the covid contingency plan for the album um well i kept thinking about it and i was like you know i have within the last two months between january february any and and into march i have about eight or nine shows that uh, I walked away from going, boy, fuck, if this was the album, uh, you know, we're, we nailed it. Um, so what I might do, what I might do is go back and listen to a couple of these sets. And, uh, and you know, I'm, I'm, because I'm out at least $1,100, uh, by not touring, by, by, by three weeks of gigs being canceled, at least 1100 bucks, if not more, is, uh, is, is something that's not coming into my income. Um, I, I have to take the responsibility to record, well, not record, but engineer the album myself. So I'm not going to be able to afford anybody. Um, even the person that I would, would use, even if they cut me a discount, you know, right now, um, taking on a risk like that, and for the amount of work that it probably will wind up being, I ugh, can't justify, um, you know, taking that kind of an expense. Um, so, uh, yeah, I, 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 I will probably. It'll probably end up being some kind of a compilation album. Uh, the material and the order of the material is going to be just like what I intended it to be, what I wanted it to be. Uh, but it'll be cut up and spliced with, uh, you know, five or six different shows, depending on depending on how I do it. it or or I might just pick one of those shows. You know, maybe Rochester, New York, was was perfect enough. And the material was, you know, exactly where I wanted it to be at the mo. You know, the with 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 the jokes being where it was, and it's still good, and it still has the framework and all that kind of stuff. Um, but maybe it doesn't. I don't know. I have to listen to it. So I got to go through a few hours worth of material. Uh, and, you know, with, with what's going on now, the one thing I will say is I know for the next week, maybe two weeks, um, booking and promoting things, uh, are just out of the question. I don't think anybody's booking anything. I don't think anybody is, um looking to go and uh, be at a live event of any kind. So uh, I, we're not going to do any of that. So it gives me a little bit of time to work on some of these other projects that I've had, including this album, and, uh, and how I'm going to put it together. Uh, because the other thing was last night, my plan was in Indianapolis... What, the 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 show in Indianapolis. I said, well, maybe I'll maybe I'll I'll luck out again, and uh, and and uh, and I'll be able to record that show. Well, you know, if we get ten, maybe fifteen people in that room, uh, and they're a good ten or fifteen, um, great. We might have an album. But but the fact that nobody came out last night. 
and it was basically dead, you know, I, like, okay, you know, whatever happens, happens, it is what it is kind of a thing, and I, and I'm, you know, as frustrated as I am about it, um, I, I can figure out what the alternative will be, so, the album isn't going to be what it's what what I it, what I intended it in being, but there are some things I can do with it. There's there's also moments um, from the last two months that uh, have been interesting, or because of the way that the but that the crowd was, I interacted with them in a particular way uh, that. Um, you know, I particularly enjoyed, and uh, and it led to some it's some moments that will never be heard again. So, what I might do, what I might do, is make a version of the album that's clean straight through. That's me doing the material straight through. Um, you know, and I like I said, I, I think I know which shows I'm going to use. Uh, for what material, and it's got it's it, there. There's six to eight shows that I that I think have the potential, and I think I know which three to four will probably end up being, um, being the, the the material to be used there, and so I will um, I'll do that, but then make another make a make a second, maybe like a bonus thing. That specifically goes on Bandcamp or something. That uh, that's that's the material, but with you know, oh, somebody said something here, and that led to like a magical little moment, you know, and uh, like an extra two or three minutes of, of comedy that you that you would that nobody would have expected, uh, and it was sort of that 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 kind of flourishing moment. Like you're not going to hear this sort of stuff again. We captured it. So we're going to give you the captured moment. Um, so, so you know, it's, there might be two uh, two different versions of the album that that uh, that you can download, um, and and I might also release like a, a deluxe double download version. I don't know yet, but I do know that I have this idea uh, that because I endlessly think about things all the time and that's just the way that my brain works after I go through my initial levels of panic which usually last very intensely for a day or two um, contingency plans have been working in the back of my brain that's just how my brain operates this is how it's always operated you know there, there's just two or three levels of thinking going on all the time um, and uh, yeah so uh, so there's that. Um, but it sucks. Uh, and I hope that the people that bought tickets to the DC and Williamsport show will, will, will be patient. And they will come back and, and see the show in June. Because um, it'll be a new show. Uh... I'm, I'm going to talk about why I want to be, why I'm ready to, to release this show, right? Some people are probably like, Chris, why don't you just wait the couple of weeks and, and you know, record it uh, at a different spot. Record, you have all these other dates coming up, why don't you just record it at one of these, one of these shows and make that the album. And I will, I will talk about that uh, at the end of, end of this video because uh, I think now let's get into what, what we're, what the main kind of meat of the of this of this video uh that's not about me and what's going on with with my tour dates and albums and stuff because there are bigger things at play here um you know at, first and foremost let's let's talk about COVID-19 the novel coronavirus is what the what the the term is I'm gonna switch out of this lane here because boy these roads are not great right now I gotta say uh, you know, when you spend that much money on military. Anyway, um, COVID-19, here's, here's what, we don't know much about it, right? First time we, I think I heard about it was back in January, but some people have been keeping up with it since they heard about it in December, 
where primarily uh, the news was coming out of China, of these people getting, uh, uh, you know, the coronavirus, COVID-19, um, and no one really knew what the fuck it was. It showed up in the States, it's in Italy, it's, uh, it's in Europe, and, you know, I think, I think that should have been the key, is like, once it showed up here, it's like, we got some work we need to do. So what are, what are the symptoms of of COVID nineteen? Uh, it's fevers, coughs, uh, shortness of breath, persistent chest pain. Those are those are uh, primarily the symptoms of COVID nineteen. Um, how does it spread? Close contact. You got to keep six feet away, is what they're saying, but. It's also a highly commutable di- disorder. So if it's in the air, it's in the air, you know. Um, and maybe, maybe through contact, the CDC's website is like maybe I don't know. We kind of didn't give a shit at first to look into it, and now we kind of have to. And we're like, I can maybe. We could have had a definitive answer by now, but but maybe. Is it, is it spread? If you lick a telephone pole, will you get it? I, I don't, maybe. Just say yes. Stop licking telephone poles. It's a, it's a highly commu- communicable disease. Uh, what does that mean? Is It means that it's, uh, it's, it, it spreads fast. It's, get, it's, it's an upper respiratory disorder. And, they, and upper respiratory disorders usually do spread a little bit faster than other uh, viruses, but but that's it's a highly communicable disease. That part I think we've we've known for quite some time now. We've known that for a, a for, for for a while, you know. Uh, they talk about prevention is I mean it's basic it's basic self care procedures, folks, right? So if you're feeling sick, if you got a fever, if you got a cough. You know, and and you're and you're run down, and you're congested, and you know you're just not feeling good. You know how I feel like everybody has had a fucking cold and a fever at some point in their lives as a goddamn adult. That once they feel it, stay at home. That's what it should have been. Stay at home. And I know there are some people that couldn't afford to stay at home, and we are going to talk about we are going to talk about that aspect of it in a little bit here, but. You know, do us all a favor. Do do everybody a favor. Do yourself a favor. And stay at home. You know, that's that's the easiest thing. Eat some vegetables. Drink some juices. Keep your fluids up. Saline solutions. You know, uh, saline saline sprays and uh, salt water gargling can help in these sort of situations. Uh, it, you know, you, you, you just just be careful. The people that are at risk highly are elderly folks. 65 plus. The numbers coming out of Italy, that's, that's primarily who is, uh, uh, who, wh- 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 where the fatalities are coming from, is 65 plus. So, you know, the, the elderly, the olds, they need help. If you're you know, in your 20s and you want to go see Graham Graham, maybe don't. Maybe maybe look, maybe look, call Graham and say, hey, would love to see you, but uh, there might be a chance that I'll kill you if I see you. I know you miss me. Guilt, guilt, guilt. I love you too, but I, hey, I don't want you to die. So, uh, you know, we'll see you in th- three to four weeks. Now, this is directly from the CDC's website where they say, hey, if you're quarantining yourself, uh, <laughs> don't just listen to pandemic news all the time. Don't, don't just you know, constantly keep updating uh, information about coronavirus you know, COVID and what's going on and all this other stuff. You know, switch out every once in a while. You, you know, get uh, get get a get a little bit of a different perspective. Go go go! Listen to something else from somebody else. 
you know, watch your Netflix and maybe some porn. Throw on some porn, you know. Just uh, just rub one out a little bit. This is uh, this is directly off the CDC website. According to CDC, this is hearing about pandemics can be very stressful. Yeah, no fucking shit. Really hearing about impending doom is stressful? Oh boy, not even that ambiguous impending doom. We don't even know what this fucking thing is going to do. We don't even know how long this is going to last. The ambiguity of all of this is 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 creating a higher level of stress than than the thing. Is. Like if you were just like, hey, there's no way to stop this thing and uh uh, look, you guys are all fucking animals that needed to wash your hands better and wash your butts better. And, uh, you know, sure, we, we needed a healthcare system and an infrastructure to take care of what was happening. But, uh, you know, there's too many of you and, yeah, we're, this is over. We've had a good run as a species. We did it. Nature won. Nature won. It finally figured out how to get rid of us. Uh, if that was the case, then I think there would be some a little bit less stress because then you just have a bunch of people, you know, I, we'd probably riot, uh, probably loot some shit, you know, things would go kind of crazy for a bit, uh, expedite the rate of extinction, and, and then we'd be gone. Uh, and that and that and it would just that would just, just the certainty of knowing would be would be like way fucking easier. But we don't know. We don't know what the fuck we're doing. So yeah, no fucking shit. It's gonna cause a lot of stress. We're stressed out as it is. We're stressed out without COVID nineteen. We're stressed out without the knowledge of the coronavirus. That's what middle. That's that's the cost of middle class life too, right? Like that. This is this is something that, you know, I don't. I don't. I really. I really don't think anybody took into consideration when this thing popped up in, in January uh, is, is, is what would happen if we ended up heading into this quarantine situation that we are uh, rapidly uh, declining into, right, is, is what would happen when we arrived at this spot. Oh my god, I'm trying not to hit all these bumps in the road. Even, even some of the smoother roads are, uh, are rocky, you know. So I, the, the people that are going to be affected by this the most are, are the middle class or the working class people, you know, the, 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 the hourly wage workers and the, the self-employed and uh, artists. We're, I mean, we're all going to be affected by it. Anybody that's in, a, in, the, in the blue collar world is 100% going to be affected by this. No question, no doubts at all. It, it, like and, and like I said, we're already living a stressful life. You know, we, we already were worried about bills. We we're already worried about putting food on the table. We're already worried about putting gas in our car. We, you know, a lot of us have to struggle and get through all this shit. A lot of us have to work overtime. Like I, I, I mean, I, I, I work uh, pretty, pretty constantly, uh, and I've been working pretty constantly. You know, just to just to eat by in, in what I need to eat by on and. Um, you know, I had I'd, um, uh, three shows on this tour uh, that uh, unfortunately had no money at all by the end of it. Uh, we had a donation-based show that, that we didn't get any donations for. We had a, a show where the door deal with the venue was uh, uh, a little goofy. Uh, and then one show got canceled. So that hurts. It affects my, it affects my ability to to put food on the table and, and pay my bills and stuff and it's detrimental and scary when that sort of stuff happens very 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 nerve wracking um, so we're already stressed out in the middle class knowing that this COVID now exists is a higher level of stress and, and, and more than that too is knowing that we don't have the structural systemic solutions that we have needed from the start of all of this since the CDC has known about COVID that they did not go 
and say, let's put a plan in place to make sure that we that people can be quarantined and when they are quarantined, they are actually taken care of. Um, so they don't have to be stressed out about the bills and everything. They can just kind of get the test, figure out if they're if they have the if they have the virus or not, um, and what they can do to alleviate the problem. Uh, those systems are just not put into place. So, you know, people were not staying put. People were not staying at home. They were going to work. They were going to both their jobs. Because, I mean, that's the thing, right? I mean, if you didn't, you might not be able to afford rent or electricity or the internet or whatever. CEOs, the billionaires, all these fucking, you know, board heads of corporations that are all, uh, they're all I mean, they're making money hand over fist on this. They're going to be fine. You know, Walmarts, Costco's, uh, fucking Sam's Club, Target's. Amazon, those fuckers are going to be fine. Their employees are not. That, that's the other thing that kind of uh, uh, annoyed me a little bit, is they came out and they said, uh, hey, if you want to stop the risk of uh, s- spreading this disease, you should, uh, you should probably not go to places with 200 plus people. And, and then the media was like, yeah, but if you don't, we have to quarantine and uh, you might die. And so everybody panicked and rushed to the grocery store where I'm almost certain if the lines at the grocery store were going all the way to the back of the fucking store, there were 200 plus people in the grocery store. So great, you create a, you, you create a panic surrounding pandemic, this pandemic, right, this outbreak. Uh, you say don't. Don't uh, don't be in areas with 200 plus. Also, rush to the grocery store because we might run out of food in now. And so everybody does that. So you essentially create an environment of 200 plus people where they're going to fucking touch each other and be within six feet of each other. Everything the CDC is telling you not to do, and they're gonna fucking do it because it's, it's because because you're creating hysteria. Yeah, I, I you know what we really have a fucking pandemic of in this country is uh, is a hysteria pandemic. We love to be fucking scared. Anything that anything that rattles that fear center of our brain, that's that's what it is. I used to do a bit about this, right? I used to have a bit where I used to talk about the amygdala um, and I used to say uh, basically like the fear and the, se- and, the, and, the, uh, and, this, and the pleasure center of the brain are located in the same spot. It's the amygdala. It's these two uh, almond-sized portions of the brain, and that's where things are. That's where these two things are, right? Fear, anxiety, anger, uh, and pleasure. It's all in one place. And, and I really do feel like uh, that, is, that is fucked with us because I think we don't get pleasure unless we're scared. Like, we can't just, like have a nice time with each other and help each other out and cooperate we have to be scared and competitive of each other because that's we 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 have now we have now given into that neurological network and now we have to deprogram ourselves from it but we can't because the media uh, fucking perpetuates that shit it it feeds into it. It, it 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 rewards that system where where you're like oh i'm scared but i'm also horny like that's how we operate I'm scared, but it feels so good. It feels so good to be scared all the time. Maybe don't. Anyway. But do you see, yo, I mean, they don't have anything to fucking worry about. They're not stressed out. No fucking Waltons are stressed out. I think Jeff Bezos is worried about what he's going to eat tomorrow. Yeah. Fucking Bill Gates worried about his electricity bill. No. If everything stops today, if nobody goes to a Target, if nobody goes to Costco, if nobody goes to Whole Foods, if nobody's buying shit from Amazon, 
the CEOs, the CFOs, all the board, all these fucking billionaires that run these corporations are gonna be fucking fine. They have so much fucking money that they're gonna be fine. So now they've kind of realized, you know, uh, within the course of the few days that, that we've been talking about this thing at a heightened level, uh, you know, we're, we're seeing stories of people being like, well, the utilities are not going to be shut off because you're going to have a bunch of people that are going to be out of work and not get the paycheck for a while. So we're not going to shut off the utilities. Um, hey, you know, and, and there's some gimmicks as well. There's some fucking gimmicks. Uh, some corporate gimmicks that, that pretend that they care, right? Like Comcast is like, hey, if you switch over to Comcast right now, we're going to give you two months free because of COVID. Hey, if you actually gave a shit, uh, you should uh, give all of your customers free internet service and free cable service. Uh, Netflix should uh, should give people like free you should you should not charge them for the next month. All the subscription services should be like, hey, we know that you're gonna watch the shit out of our stuff uh, in your quarantine, so uh, we're we're just gonna we're just gonna let it go this month. Don't worry about it. Keep that seven bucks. Keep that ten bucks. You know, hold on to it. You're probably gonna need it for some food or water or something along those lines. Really, who are in trouble is us, the middle class, blue collar people, small businesses, independent contractors, hourly workers. They're the ones that are affected the most, right? Salary people, um, I think they're okay, although they probably aren't going to be doing amazing, right? I think I think salary workers, most of them are still getting their salary. Um, but uh, but it's still like you're not going into work. You still got it. You're working remotely. You got to do, do this other shit. But middle class workers, what are we going to do? Restaurant servers, they work on tips. What are we going to do? Security guards can't go into a place that's closed. What are they going to do? Touring performers? I mean, touring performers are getting screwed over as well. Losing three weeks worth of work and uh, at least 1100 bucks that I'm not going to be making as income. Then you have, you have people that get, you know, kind of subscribe to sustaining memberships and, that, that, and that's, you know, that's tough too because that's part of how I make a living. And that's part of how a lot of people make a living. A lot of these creators, I mean, their their sole income is that sustaining membership. And if their fans and their subscribers and their supporters who are giving 5, 10, 15 bucks a month because they enjoy the content that comes out of this person, they believe in this they believe in this content creator. Um, they can't afford that because they have to buy toilet paper or milk and eggs oh my god excuse me guys sorry about the yawn kind of snuck up on me but you know if these if these blue collar people can't support other blue collar people because there's no there's no way to do it because they have to pay rent still they have to put gas in their car they gotta buy groceries What are they going to do? They're, you know, they're, they're going to have to cut that sustaining membership. And then the artists are going to suffer. That's something that we haven't really concerned about. Like, we're, that's, that's what we're going to see is, is a bunch of people that aren't even going to die from COVID. They're going to die from starvation because people can't afford shit by quarantining themselves because of COVID. Because there's no fucking plan put into place. You're literally creating starving artists.
But that's what pandemics are. Pandemics are a battle between logic and fear, right? The second that word is used about anything, pandemic uh, or epidemic or whatever, um, people fucking freak the fuck out. They bug out, man. They bug the fuck out. People get hooked on these words real hardcore. They get hooked on them real hard. Uh, you know, they, they, they believe in these words a whole lot. They, these words carry so much fucking weight. Uh, and, and we're so reactionary to, to, to what we attribute these words to mean. Um, seriously, like... Once the word pandemic is used, we go into a total panic state. Just paranoia and hysteria. It's ridiculous. The CDC, I think, should have gotten ahead of this problem way back in January, February. Uh, That's the first that I heard there was a case in the States was in in January. It might have been before. Based on on what 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 we're hearing, it might have been before. We don't know. Uh, And, you know, the CDC didn't fucking do dick all about it. They didn't do anything about it. They were just like, okay, there's a case here. Why would you not look at it? And then especially in February, when there were multiple cases of it starting to pop up around the country, go, okay, guys, this does not seem like it is a one-off, random-ass event that just happened. This is looking like it's going to spread. Let's talk about what we're going to do if this thing turns into an outbreak. We have... we. Let, what are we going to do to study this thing to prevent it from becoming an outbreak to you know contain this thing a little bit more to 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 be smarter about this thing just a little bit I'm not saying create a panic I'm not saying let's say that shut everything down I'm saying that there's a potential of this to spread so maybe we should create an emergency plan Maybe we should get Congress involved to say what what happens when we have to 100% say people have to stay at their homes, they can't get together in public spaces, you know, don't go, small businesses are going to be affected, individual sole proprietors are going to be affected, hourly contractors are going to be affected, you know, like a lot of this country is going to be affected when people aren't going out and spending money and stimulating the economy because people stimulate the economy. That should have been the conversation that they should have been having in February so that when we got to this point in the second week of March it wasn't a fucking like holy fuck what do we do? It's everywhere. It's crazy. It's spread. You can have it. Look out. Don't touch your neighbors. Like it, you know. Because that's where it's at now. And it just happened so fucking quick, too. This is the time now to look ahead to the future and say, well, maybe we create a system uh, that is based on preventative measures um, rather than fail-safes and, uh, you know, fucking damage control all the time. We create a system where we go, hmm, something seems to be wrong. The logical thing to do would be to look into this thing that's going wrong and come up with a plan uh, that is going to uh, alleviate a transition if the transition needs to be made to an extreme situation this gets into an outbreak, we have to quarantine a a bunch of places. Okay, how do we help these people? Let's put it into place. 
that's what we kind of need. We need that for a while. We need more preventative measures. We, we None of this, like... We can't do anything unless it gets terrible. Well, wait a minute. Let's not let it get terrible. Let's just do something about it before shit gets crazy. Let's look for an. Let's look for, you know, the way this thing is moving. Let's do some research. Let's fund the research. Let's fund things that that. You know, encourage and enable critical thinking. The conversation has also been, you know, uh, about how how much more safe this would be if we had Medicare for all, because you wouldn't have a bunch of people worrying about getting tested because they can't afford the tests. They don't know where to go. The hospitals are being all fucking weird about them and. Um, you know, they, they are, uh, so they're just not getting tested. Also, there's limited tests. There was limited testing in February. Limited testing. Why the fuck would you limit the testing of this thing? If you, if this is as serious as what you said it is, then you should, then hindsight, yeah, you should have been like, we fucked up. We're sorry. We're going to, we're going to help everybody out. Free testing. Free testing nationwide. That's probably what it should have been to begin with. Everybody said, you know, all the anti-Medicare for all people, like, at this point, I mean, what, what more do you need uh, what what glaring examples do you need of this capitalist system that is clearly not working for everybody? That clearly does not give a shit. Because at this point, they're just like, wait, how can we make money off of this tragedy? How can we make money off of this crisis? How can we make money off of this calamity? Gotta increase that bottom line, baby! Even if it's the extinction, I will make sure that I have the most amount of money as we go extinct. That's that's the way the system operates. Medicare for all would be a overwhelming positive, especially in this situation, right? So a lot of people are like, well, what about jobs, Chris? A lot of, what about jobs? Your jobs are going to disappear. Yeah, the insurance jobs will. The Some of the fucking bullshit farmer jobs will. And we'll go through a transition for a little bit. Not long. A few months, maybe. But it'll encourage people to actually get into the healthcare profession now. Because they're actually doing healthcare. They're actually helping people with medicine. They're actually trying to save lives. They're actually trying to do research on a fucking virus that we don't have enough information on that we should have been doing for three months now. They didn't put that system in. They didn't put any sort of emergency plan. They didn't even think about it. If we actually had more healthcare professionals, we would actually be able to handle this crisis a lot better. So yeah, Medicare for All is going to create more medical jobs. Real medical jobs. Not bullshit administrative medical jobs. Real medical jobs. The practice of medicine is what's important. Test would be free. Everybody would be able to go get it. It gets everybody on the same page. And we could have taken care of this thing efficiently. We could have contained the spread of it. We could have figured out, you know, are you, did you come into contact with somebody?
the infrastructure of the current system in place does none of that. And who's paying the price? We are. Regular common people are. The CDC and the FDA's ego is what got us here. American hubris is why we're here. The hubris of America to say, sit there and say, well, we're the fucking best. Nothing can ever happen to us because we're the fucking best. Look how big our dicks are. Like that, none of that fucking matters. Nobody cares about your dick. Put it away. We're trying to solve a fucking crisis here, asshole. The CDC and the FDA just like didn't listen to anybody. So when, when in February things were, you know, kind of spreading around, uh, there were universities, academics in Washington State. They're like, hey, we figured out how to uh, detect this thing. We figured out how to see if somebody has it, even if they're not showing any symptoms. Um, and especially, like, maybe you can use it. And the FDA was like, no, no, we're not going to listen to you, you fucking nerd. You goddamn college elite liberal fucking nerd. Fuck you. We're going to come up with it on our own because we're strong. We're the F- we're American FDA. Fuck you. Cleveland Clinic had a way to detect it. Cleveland Clinic had a, had a test that they could put into place. So like, it has to be us. We're the FDA and the CD. It, 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 me. The credit has to be to me. Like, that's the way that they dealt with it. Because of ego and hubris, we wound up here. So what's the contingency plan, right? To help the people that need the help, especially uh, what, uh, like the middle class that are gonna, uh, you know, be out of work for a couple weeks. Well, you have Tulsi Gabbard that uh, enacted an emergency UBI situation. Put a, she put that vote in the Congress to say that every American should just get $1,000 a month until this thing blows over. Talk about what Andrew Yang was going to do, right? Uh, emergency UBI. Let's do it. Let's, let's allocate the funds, $1,000 a month, uh, and that's about what I'm losing in the next four weeks. That's about what I'm not making in the next four weeks, right? It would be $1,000 uh, it would help help out with like if that actually goes through, and we make that work, and then the next two weeks they said you know the 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 American government sends every citizen in America a thousand dollars, we'd be fine. We'd be able to get through. That's that's enough money that you know in an emergency situation that that does make a a hell of a difference. I think. What, what this is is basically an extra layer of security for the middle class. That's all. That's, that's really what it is, right? Um, sure, you have utilities. You, you have some, some uh, credit card companies are, are saying, well, don't worry about the bill. We're, we're, you, you know, we'll, we'll just extend it, and we won't charge you the interest and all that sort of stuff. Uh, don't worry about this bill. Don't worry about that bill. You know, make sure you have food. Make sure you have water. Make sure you're able to pay for your doctor's appointments. Those are all nice, but having that extra thousand bucks, holy Christmas, is that going to make a big difference? It's going to make a real big difference. Just thinking about thinking about um, just the performers in general, right? Right now, what's happening is uh, everything is everything is in, is in limbo. Everything is sort of on hold. So even if there are events past the next two or three weeks, which is what they're saying the quarantine should be, you know, uh, stay inside, only go to the grocery store to get gas. If you absolutely need to go to work, I guess go to work. Because um, I guess the grocery, I mean, the grocery stores. If they're going to stay open, then they're going to have to pay some employees to to do that so that, you know, uh, they're 
or somebody to check people out. Um, so, but let's say in the two weeks, three weeks, whatever it is, at the end of that, well, people are still not buying tickets to come see a live event because things are things are okay, but they're still in flux. Well, there goes the income for touring performers. Having $1,000 to buff that out. Might save some lives. Less starving artists, more just artists. And I am using, I'm using, I'm using touring performer as an example here, right? Like that's one example before everybody's like, what about this thing, big crash? You, you didn't even talk about these people. I, I'm, it's an example. It's all it is. I understand that there's a lot of bigger, you know, various different types of jobs and bigger situations at hand as well that, uh, like servers too, servers would, I mean, you'd be able to take some time off, hourly workers would be able to take some time off as well. But here's what the government did do, though. Here's what the Fed actually did do. Uh, They just pumped $1.5 trillion into Wall Street to bail them out. Like, oh, oh no, the crash might be coming. Oh, my God, is is it a crash? Oh, the... Make up money, make up money, funnel it in, funnel it in. We can't let this thing die. We have to let this fake institution live while real people are dying. Fuck the real people. The fake institution helps us feel important so we can keep exploiting poor people. $1.5 trillion given to Wall Street versus $1,000 to every adult American in this country. Like, that's like... No brainer right there. What's what's less costly? Thousand dollars a month to every fucking American is way less costly than one point five trillion dollars that you just made up out of thin air to give to Wall Street and the fucking crony capitalists. You know a question no one's asking? How are we gonna pay for this these fucking bankers to be bailed out? Yeah, you don't ask that question whenever the banks get bailed out, do we? I don't hear any conservatives going, What the fuck? This handout is free money bullshit to the banks. I don't hear any conservatives coming out. I'm just going, secure the banks. Yeah, yeah, that's what you got to do. Secure the banks so they can rob me later. Didn't worry about that. Didn't worry about funding the research. Didn't worry about helping the American citizens. Didn't worry about taking care of the working class. We're just bailing out the banks, no problem. Oh, what about healthcare? How are we gonna pay for that? We gotta bail out banks. We're making money up for banks. How dare you bring in the question of health and saving people's lives, you sick fuck. That's how people talk about this shit. Do you see how idiotic it is now to make that kind of an argument? See how illogical it is to make that kind of an argument? The government makes up money for wars and for corporate interests and and to keep a fake economic system going. You know who drives the economy? Fucking we do. By supporting each other. The small venues that I play, when you come out and you buy drinks or you buy tickets to support those smaller venues, those DIY mom and pop shops, you are actually stimulating the economy. The real economy. The Wall Street, the banks and all that shit, that's just a, 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 a fucking popularity contest for, for how well rich people are doing. And they want you to buy into it so that you can make them richer and make them more popular and make them feel more important. That's all that is. That's not the real economy. We care about markets more than we care about people. 
There it is. It's exposed. Again. Like a fucking raw nerve. It's exposed. We bailed out fucking Wall Street while people are sick. Well, well, people, but well, we might have, you know, the elderly at risk. That's the choice we made. I was in, uh, I was in Juliet, outside Chicago, and I had to stop off at a mall to do some damage control. You know, because we had to get in touch with venues and kind of move a little bit fast about some stuff. I was in Juliet. I was at, I was in a mall sitting at a, a Panera Bread, right? Uh, because that's what was available to me. Because corporations are just everywhere. And that mall was packed. Fucking packed. But these small theaters in Chicago, the little mom and pop shops... Ain't nobody gonna support them, right? You know, where are the priorities at? The corporations will be fine. They'll be fine. It bears repeating because it bears repeating. The mom and pop shops are the ones that need your help the most. The independent artists are the ones that need your help the most. The regular working class Americans are the ones that need the help the most. And what are we doing? We're gonna bail out a bunch of rich people so that they don't lose maybe 1% of their astronomical fucking wealth so that they can hold on to their fucking sociopathy. So how do they do it, right? That's the question. Well, the Fed basically said, well, we just went into the computer and just added a bunch of stuff. We moved a decimal point over so that there was 1.5 trillion more dollars into into Wall Street so that rich people have more money to play with and, uh, you know, uh, dangle in the face of the, the suffering American middle class. This is what they're doing. This is this is the this is the exposure, is is, you know, capitalism is no longer working. The the Fed is just making up money and adding it into the market. We're 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 making money up to prop up fucking nothing. This is nothing. people are in trouble the system does not matter more than the people within it without the people you don't have a system to exp- like you know the system can't exploit anybody if everybody's dead it can't exploit anybody if everybody's too sick to be exploited because they can't get out of bed or they've locked themselves up in their apartment so tight that they think even if they see somebody sneeze on TV, they're going to get COVID. Look, money is supposed to be a tool. It's supposed to be a tool, you know, to help us figure out the value of things. And and basically what we've done now uh, is use it for a popularity contest, contest and a bunch of rich people exploiting poor people. And here's the thing, rich people got free money. That 1.5 trillion bailout is free money for rich people. That's what that is. To every fucking conservative, every fucking right winger that sits there and says, oh, everybody just wants things for free. Well, the rich people just got a bunch of fucking free shit. So where are you at freaking out on that? By the way, this crash was also predicted. This crash was also predicted. They predicted this crash. Uh, they saw that this this would happen. Um, J.P. Morgan Chase, Goldman Sachs, Wells Fargo all said that 2020 there was a major crash that's going to be coming, and and maybe this is it, maybe this is not. But I'm pretty sure they were like, maybe this is it, and we should stop it. 
we uh, I mean we're not creating the crash and we we have to create the crash because when we create crashes we make a lot of money off of it and at, th at this point you know the, the markets were crashing because people were like we're not gonna fucking buy into corporations anymore we got to support some each other and take care of each other we're, we're kind of veering into that So, you know, there's a reason for why that's done. And it's done so that they can pump money, reignite Wall Street and the banks and, and the stock exchange and all this shit. So that once all this stuff blows over, and I do believe that it will, um, it will blow over, um... I do believe that people are at a point where they're, they're they are going to quarantine themselves, uh, you know. And I was I was talking to to, to Lee Camp today, um, and, you know, and basically he was like, "Yeah, this is basically where Italy was uh, 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 eleven days in." And uh, you know, if if we're headed on that trajectory, we're we're going to have to be. Yeah, if we don't want to head on the same trajectory as Italy, then we're going to have to listen and fucking stay inside and uh, take care of ourselves a little bit more, you know. The final note that I wanted to, want to bring up about this thing is Kim Iverson posted this, but I also saw a couple of reports about this when this when, when I first heard about COVID in January. Uh, basically... There are a bunch of Iranian, Russian, Israeli, and Chinese officials claiming that this is a biological weapon, is what they're claiming. I, I, I know this kind of sounds like a conspiracy theory, but I, but I do want to talk about it because there are some important things that, that have come up, even through the lens of conspiracies. Even through the lens of conspiracies, there are important factual details that we need to, we need to consider about about COVID, a perspective that I don't think is really being talked about a whole lot, you know. So, um, so the Iranian prime minister claims that it's a mutated bioweapon. It's man-made in a lab, and it's used as a weapon uh, against, uh, against, you know, the the, the, the 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 select enemies is what they what they said, right? But they have, there's really no evidence. There's really no evidence to kind of support that kind of stuff. Um, now, where is that coming from is because, well, Iran has 10,000 cases, 429 deaths. The virus is spreading pretty intensely in Iran. Uh, and first of all, they have no way to get medical supplies and equipment because of U.S. sanctions. So a lot of people are like, this economic, this economic warfare is medical terrorism because you're literally... You're literally preventing sick people from getting medicine. So, so not only not only is the American healthcare system and the American government uh, not providing healthcare and aid and helpful resources to its own people, but is now fucking over the people of Iran with its sanctions. Like, how many people have to fucking die? on a global level before capitalism realizes this is not the time to fucking make money. And I think the time to talk about making money off of this shit is fucking done. We're done with it. Sometimes you got to do shit for the benefit of people and not profit. So the Iranian officials believe that it wasn't naturally occurring in Iran. That's what they're saying. And uh, so Kim Iverson, when I watched this thing, she was pulling up some maps and stuff. And if you look at the number of cases in um, in the surrounding countries, you know, it's very low. It's like 70 something, 60 something. Like India, which is a pretty densely populated country, only has 73 cases, uh, which might be because we're better at washing hands than everybody else. I don't know. I don't know. Maybe. Maybe it's because we value science. Uh, I don't know. Maybe. Now, um, you know, like I said, it, it, we're, we're delving into the realm of conspiracy theory a little bit here. And, 
I, I don't particularly want to go all the way through that, but uh, yeah, you know, I think it's it's important to think about it, but primarily the thing that I want to take out of it is the fact that these sanctions on Iran need to be lifted. Whether you like Iran or not doesn't fucking matter. People in Iran need help, and the United States is preventing that from happening with their economic warfare. And so, you know, to me, when you kind of look at that, of course they think it's a biological weapon. The number of cases have spiked because they can't control, uh, they can't help people. They need medical equipment. They need medical supplies that they're not getting. So, you know, it's getting a little rampant without, without a mild, even a mild level of control. And they think that it's being used against them and they're taking it personally because, yeah, it's kind of fucking personal. Because America won't fucking let up on that economic sanction. I 100% get that. Now, Russia's blaming the United States as well. Uh, which, why the fuck not, right? I mean, the U.S. blames Russia for everything, you know? I'm I'm surprised that we haven't mccarthy this thing. I'm very surprised. Just like, this could be Russian. They could have infected Chinese people with, with, uh, but they gave them bad vodka and uh, made them wear uh, funny hats with the virus inside of the hats. And then, uh, and then they sent the, uh, bought a plane ticket for these Chinese people to come into Italy and uh, destroy democracy through viruses. Corona, communism, they both kind of start with the same letters. I'm surprised that hasn't fucking happened. I'm sure it will. I'm waiting for it. Who knows? Tomorrow could be a new nightmare for us to deal with. Uh... I think one of the stories said it was like from bat soup or something that somebody consumed that and that's where the that's where the virus came in and it transmuted and mutated and became what it was uh, so the way they put it is uh, you know animal consumption normally hasn't led to something like this you know, and the argument is that maybe, I mean, it, it mutates a lot. Like, coronaviruses, novel coronaviruses is mutating and stuff. And, yeah, it's kind of the, what happens when you when, when you have a highly communicable disease it's, and it's going through per, pe- person to person. It's going gonna, it's gonna to mutate a little bit faster and kind of, so, you know, that's, that's something that uh, is a challenge and a problem. But... I'm not sure, I mean, it's possible with, with the hormones and stuff that we put into animals now that, that this could be caused because of, because of you know, the, the things that we're doing to animals in order to, to eat them. Uh, and what they're claiming is, this is Russia's claim, is these are selective countries that have been oppositional to the U.S. or U.S. interests, Right. So China uh, has like 80,000 cases. Israel has like, you know, 10,000. Italy has a bunch of cases. And the thing with Italy is, there, first of all, there's a lot of Chinese tourists that go to Italy, right? Because it's a big touristy destination. Uh, but uh, business from China, like they want Chinese business and they're creating this like new Silk Road situation uh, which would help them kind of migrate off of the EU because it'll give them a little bit more of a trade, like more security and trade and stuff. Uh, so, you know, the, the paranoid thinking is like, oh, the EU found out and, and now this biological weapon was released in Italy as a punishment to try to try to walk out of the EU as well. So, I mean, it still sounds like a conspiracy theory because you would need some heavier evidence to to really address it but it's kind of interesting to think about 
you know, who knows? There, there might be a, 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 a little nugget of truth somewhere in there. We, you know, you never know. But this is basically where we're at. Um, where we're at is... Uh, it's time to drop this need for profit. That's where we're at. Uh, I think a moment like this has kind of proved that once you start... Validating a system that is solely driven on the profit of tragedies and, you know, trying to, trying to commercialize and capitalize on every good goddamn thing, eventually you're going to get to this point where it doesn't make logical sense to, to drive a solution to a crisis through the means of profit. It's a logically an abysmally backwards way of thinking. And what we need is some cooperation, some compassion, some understanding over this profit, fear, and isolationism. What we need now, if, if we are going to say that this capitalist government that is in place really cares about the people that are sick, then it's time for that capitalist government to prove itself to us by enacting provisions and plans to help take care of uh, people in the time of crisis. If this truly is a pandemic, then, then treat it that way and fucking help some people out. I think we're going to end it there. I think we're going to end it there. I might do a separate video uh, about my my why I need to record this album and all that kind of jazz. But I think we're going to end it there. Uh, this is a pretty long fucking video, and I and I, I I hope you guys got through the end of it. There's a, there's a lot that I wanted to cover. A lot that happened in four days. I mean that that's sort of the thing is like this thing moved so fucking fast. It's crazy. Uh, you know, so a lot happened in four days, and uh, I, I, stay safe out there. You know, wash your hands, wash your butts. Uh, you know, keep yourself clean. Drink uh, OJ. Eat vegetables. Fucking take your supplements. Uh, rinse your throat with some salt water. Um, you know what? What else can you do? Don't. Uh, uh, hey, maybe we don't fuck for a little while. You think that might be a thing that we could try? Is just uh, don't uh, don't bang. Just uh, just rub rub a couple rub it out a couple of times a day, and uh, and we'll be fine. You know, we'll we'll stop spreading this thing around. Uh, we'll we'll get this thing contained. We'll we'll uh, you know maybe maybe if we don't uh, fuck a little bit for a little while, it'll uh, it'll help with the population problem that we've been growing into and. Uh, yeah, things might get a little bit better. Uh, as I mentioned in this video, I am uh, losing three weeks worth of work, and uh, that's a lot, uh, and that's difficult. Uh, if you have the means to, uh, if you are somebody that uh, you know does not have through through this situation of crisis, are somebody that has the means to financially contribute to things that you enjoy. Um, I would recommend financially contributing to uh, independent media, not corporate media, independent uh, businesses and uh, artists and things of that sort. Um, if, if I am one of those independent artists that you would like to contribute to, you can do so by joining my Patreon at patreon.com slash krishmohanhaha. Uh, that's patreon.com slash krishmohanhaha. Uh, or you can go directly to my website and become a sustaining member uh, on my website by looking for the big orange buttons. Uh, they're directly available on my homepage at ramennoodlescomedy.com. That's R-A-M-A-N, noodlescomedy.com. Um, 
as of now the tour dates that I have up there are uh, are, are, are current and they're the ones that will be uh, staying where they are for, for now if there's any changes um, I will uh, I will be sure to let you guys know um, yeah so uh, think about donating think about uh, if you're not subscribed uh, I hope you subscribe um, get updates and all that kind of stuff uh, so and you know what am I going to do over the course of the next couple of weeks is is a lot of writing a lot of updating of the website uh, yeah I'm going to try to do that I'm going to try to work on that a little bit so uh, keep keep your eyes peeled on that I don't think it's going to be a full update because I uh, like I said there are some funds involved and now that we're we're kind of in this in this uh gray area this limbo of uh financial sustainability uh, let's call it uh i i don't know if i can if i can drop um money into that right now uh, oh you can also download a bunch of my shit like my albums and stuff go to my band camp Bandcamp. Uh, ramen noodles comedy. Bandcamp. Com, or if you just go to Bandcamp and look up my name, you'll you'll probably find my albums. Um, everything is pay what you want except for Empathy on Sale, which is ten bucks, uh, and you know eventually that'll also be pay what you want. So uh, I have like six different albums on there. There's a, there's a shit ton of material uh, from me. Um, so uh, if, uh, if you're interested in that, that's another way that you can kind of help out. Uh, share, share all the stuff around. Tell your friends. Tell your enemies. Tell anybody that you feel like needs to listen to us. you got a conservative friend that keeps talking about uh, Medicare for All and how it's going to be a scam. You know, send them, send, send, them, send them this video and show them. You know, the, the part of where we talk about how they're bailing out Wall Street and, and why Medicare for All would be creating more and better jobs, more important jobs. Um, you know, give us more meaning and purpose and give us more health in our lives, and that's what we need. Um, yeah, okay, so I think we're going to wrap it up there. I appreciate you guys watching. I appreciate you guys listening. Uh, it, you know, uh, it, we're in troubled times, so let's take care of each other. You know, let's help each other out. Uh, let's do the best that we can for each other. Um, it's important. It's important now more than ever. Uh, so I'm going to do my best. Uh, I hope you guys are out there doing your best to be safe. Uh, and we'll hopefully uh, see you soon. Uh, till, till the end of the COVID outbreak. We'll see you on the road, guys.